This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Let's go to the phone lines to get the McClarty Daniel hotline and welcome in Richard Davenport of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette and Whole Hog Sports. Richard, let's start with the 4th of July fireworks that Arkansas football got. Ashton Bethel Roman, Missouri City, Texas, four-star wide receiver. Another good get for wide receivers coach Kenny Guyton. Yeah, uh, 6'1", 170, runs a 21.51, 200 meters, uh, uh, long jump 22.10. Uh, obviously the athleticism is there. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. And then that, that's, that was, uh, you know, the spring. So obviously if he, if he, uh, he wanted to run his senior year, he'd probably do better than that as far as, uh, his 21, five, one and in the long jump. Uh, but, uh, his father played at LSU defensive back at LSU and played 10 seasons in the NFL. So his genes are pretty good. Uh, he chose Arkansas uh, over about 20 other offers, but uh, really came down to Arkansas, Texas Tech, and Oregon. Made official visits to all those uh, those schools, and uh, in talking to him, he said, uh, "Really, it was uh, Coach Pittman, Coach uh, Coach Guyton, and the SEC that uh, kind of swayed him to Arkansas." So, uh, a very good pickup. Uh, second, uh, second high, second highest rated. Uh, commitment uh, on Arkansas's list, uh, second only to Charleston Collins, the defensive lineman from Mills, and uh, a top 100 guy and uh, one of the top uh, receivers in the country, obviously. Richard, this is the 14th commit in the class of 2024. Now, I know there's kind of a new age of adding the transfer rankings into the overall recruiting ranking, but do you think this has a chance to be Pittman's best high school haul yet since arriving in Arkansas? Yeah, I was uh, kind of dabbling with the numbers yesterday. or Not, not necessarily the, the ranking numbers, but uh, uh, where they are as far as the uh, number of uh, four-star prospects. And uh, right now they have six. They did tie that last year uh, in last year's class with six uh, four-stars. But uh, so obviously they, they – with 14 commitments, uh, they, they still have a, a ways to go, but uh, I, I think it could be. It, it just all depends how the how it, uh, plays out uh, from now to to December. But uh, it, I, I think if if you had to say yes or no, I, I'd probably uh, venture to say yes that it will probably be the best uh, class he's had, which makes sense. Uh, you know, considering uh, he's you know being a uh, being a, a guy that uh, came into a difficult situation and and obviously uh, kind of somewhat of an unknown as a head coach and now kids are getting to know him and he's got a little bit of a track record uh, going you know as far as uh, what he can do as a coach and also as, as as a recruiter. Richard Davenport with us on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. RD, walk us through the next few days or a week or two because I know we've hit a dead period. A lot of coaches on vacations. High school coming, high school athletes in our state coming back from their dead period. Um, I don't know if there's any downtime, but it seems like this might be the slowest time for recruiting headlines. Yeah, it, it, it is uh, as far as uh, visits and stuff like that. But uh, uh, the dead period started the 26th of uh, June as far as college football recruiting. And we'll go to the 24th of July. Uh, uh, and, uh, so that, that's, that's when all the college coaches around the country try to get in, uh, two, three weeks of vacation before uh, the start of, uh, of, uh, fall practice. So, uh, they're still recruiting. They're still talking to kids. The dead period only means that, uh, there can't be any visits on campus, which, uh, obviously allows them to take some, uh, downtime. And then, uh, with the high school, Dead period. I think it's over on Monday, and uh, then things kind of heat up there as far as getting prepared for uh, for for, for uh, this upcoming season. So uh, the coaches and and high school players will uh, you know start working out and start to get back on the job. Yeah, I know the school starts in many places in our state the middle of August, so that means practice is going to start like you said next week. I know my son, who's in the eighth grade, has his first practice on the twelfth, which essentially means. For anyone with a high school athlete in their house, summer is over uh, pretty much next week. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I tell you what, just 
just uh, you know, just the way the weather has been, even though it's been a little bit milder uh, today. I mean, it, it you know, it seems like the older you get, you, you just marvel at what you used to go through uh, uh, during two. Uh, you know, they don't have two days anymore, no. but uh, during two days back in the day, and and uh, and you still you, you just look at uh, you know what these guys go through and, and conditioning, and then uh, even just the one practice that they deal with. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's the dog days of summer for 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 a number of reasons, and I think it also uh, relates to kids having to work out, especially out in this weather. Talking with Richard Davenport this morning. Richard, we got a text on the McClarty Daniel hotline. This comes from Bobby in Ashdown. He's wondering why they aren't on Arca- or Texas High's Tredarian Bell. Uh, if I said his name wrong, I apologize, but he's got 20-plus D1 offers at Texas High. I know they're on the, the Bidden High School running back in the class of 2024. Does that have something to do with why maybe they're not recruiting Bell at this point? Uh, what, what, what school? At Texas High, Tredarian Texas High? Bell, or Ball. Excuse you me. know, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I, I, I've heard the name, but uh, just because Arkansas hasn't been connected with him, I, I really haven't uh, kind of looked into the situation, to be honest with you, because uh, obviously they've, they've uh, made a ton of offers uh, around the country and I kind of focus on the guys that they're they're currently recruiting, but uh, that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean that they won't eventually. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I really don't have a lot to add, to be honest with you. You mentioned Charleston Collins, young man out of Mills and in, in Little Rock, and I wonder when you look at this class of 2024. We've talked about some in-state kids, some out-of-state kids. How, what is the expectation for a good in-state recruiting class in Arkansas? How, how many kids could Sam Pittman expect to be scholarship-worthy players each year? On average, usually uh, five to seven, but this is, a, this is a, one of the better classes. Uh, I think there's uh, uh, 12 or 13, I'm, I'm trying to remember, guys in the 24 class that have offers from the University of Arkansas. I think it's 13. So that's that's an exceptional year. So, uh, I, but uh, usually it's any, anywhere from five to seven. But you know, when you have a class like this and you're able to land most of the guys, uh, that obviously just makes your job so much easier as as head coach or an assistant coach at the University of Arkansas because usually about two thirds of your class comes from out of state, and this could potentially just be about maybe half. Of, uh, of your recruiting class. So uh, being able to recruit in-state kids that, uh, for the most part, have always wanted to be Razorbacks, much easier than going out of state. What are the biggest storylines in high school football? Is it going to be about coaching changes and, and, and the moves? And you, you think about Buck James moving to Conway and Shiloh Christian's gotten a new coach and there's several new coaches in the in the uh, 7A West? Or is it going to be about guys like Walker White? What, what will... What will fans kind of gravitate towards as we start high school football uh, August 25th or something like that? It's uh, week zero for most schools. Yeah, well, I, I tend to think it would be a little bit of a combination of both uh, just because uh, there's so many uh, different uh, different storylines that you, you, you'll have, especially, like you said, with Buck going to, to Conway. Conway and Bryant play against one another. Uh, you know, uh, Claude Sanders uh, took over at uh, – at Bryant, and you know, obviously, you know, that's hey, he, you know, you know, he, he he's not uh, he's not uh, lacking confidence or anything like that. But the natural tendency is going to be, uh, well, how does Bryant do? Do they continue to to be the powerhouse that they've been under Buck? If not, you know, that that's a little bit of a press, a little bit of pressure for Coach Sanders, and then. Uh, and like you said, uh, new coach uh, announced yesterday for uh, Shiloh Christian. But uh, and then you got all the uh, Division One players in the twenty four class that I that I just mentioned that uh, that are uh, you know have Razorback offers or D one offers and, and, and uh, committed to else, elsewhere like Walker White. So there's going to be a lot of competition, inter- a lot of interesting games when uh, uh, some of those guys compete against one another. Yeah, we're so used to games, I guess, traditionally starting in. September, but with this week zero, they added, I don't know, it's been three or four years um, where you got four weeks to play your three non-conference games. 
we're going to see action much sooner. We're talking about practices beginning uh, next week for most schools. They've got games coming up in about five weeks. Yeah, uh, it, uh, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, I think we've talked about this in the past, but uh, it, it gives you a lot of interesting possibilities for scheduling, and uh, uh, I think that high school coaches have embraced that. And obviously, anytime you have a, a high-profile game or whatever that uh, you could possibly play in uh, as far as the opening uh, weekend, I mean, that, that that's kind of a motivation for the kids when, when they're going through the uh, summer practices. Richard, last thing I want to ask you about baseball-wise. Dave Van Horn was talking about their incoming recruiting class. He thinks they're going to get some pitchers to the hill, but there's a lot of maybe infielders and outfielders that are just going to go straight to the draft. How much more difficult it is to recruit in baseball relative to basketball and football because you have to fend off professional leagues right out of high school? Yeah, it's insane. I, I don't envy Coach uh, uh, Van Horn and the staff and any, any baseball uh, program uh, in, in, in college athletics just because of that. The 23 class at Arkansas, and I don't do a lot of uh, baseball recruiting, but uh, the 23 class that the University of Arkansas has signed is a historical type class. Uh, it's it's one, you know, uh, no perfect game. It's the best uh, recruiting class that uh, anybody has signed since they started uh, uh, keeping records uh, back in 2010. Uh, the previous class, uh, I think they got 13 top 100 prospects, according to Perfect Game. Uh, the previous high was like, I think, 10 or 11 by Florida back in 2010 or 2011. So, yeah, I mean, you, you sign, you, 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 sign you, you, you get commitments from a lot of these guys very early, even before the, the, the rankings uh, really kind of catch up and, and notice uh, how good they are. And then, then you have all the notoriety about, uh, you know, you signed uh, 13 top 100s. But the problem is, is uh, like you said, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, I, I don't know who all will not make it to campus, but I'm supposed to be talking to, to a Baseball America guy today about that uh, particular subject. So I'm going to get a little bit more insight on that uh, today and probably write about that on Sunday. So I'm looking forward to that. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's got to be so frustrating uh, because a lot of the kids really do uh, commit early uh, in the process, and, and that's before, like I said, the, they, they start to mature and, and uh, become the you know, major league baseball player, or major league baseball uh, prospects that, the, that the, they, they become. And, and you it's kind of a roll of the dice when you get those commitments that early, but uh, then then they uh, then you know we're gonna we're gonna find out pretty soon with the, the the draft coming up. Richard, we'll leave it there, man. We appreciate your insight, and we'll do it again next Thursday. Sounds good, guys. Take care. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.